last time I was with you guys in regards to the quant segment, I don't know if you remember me talking about the whole thing with Andrew Carrier, right? He's the head marketing guru over at the quant network. So he was doing some work apparently with Ed Hara. Now I'm not, you know, talking about Hara-san from Jasmine, but it's Ed Hara. And we were talking about wholesale CBDC for Spain this time around. Okay, and we were pointing out how that was significant. We'll try to find out some more details. Well, we got more details about that, but that's not going to be the main thing to shine for tonight. It's a big outline. I want to get into it. I think it's it's definitely worth getting into. So let me get the screen ready. I'm going to share this with you. And for whatever reason, Mr. Andrew Carrier decided to stop tweeting. And this is where, of course, Quant Pop has stated you know, if you want to get any quant news, it's not from Twitter anymore. You know, as far as the official guys, you got to get from like LinkedIn and stuff like that. Or you just follow people like, you know, the great tokenizer, right? But nonetheless, this is one of his last tweets from last calendar year. Uh, Andrew basically retweeted this. And it's this lady, Celine Justice, right? Chief of Curiosity, product marketer and eager learner, right? This lady has a lot of profound influence. She's also part of the Quant Network. But he tweeted specifically this. And why I point this out? Well, like it says, it's a wrap for the Quant team last year, 2023. And it says, pound sign UK Finance DIS by UKF Tweets, which is the UK Finance. Um, and it's interesting because, like it says, it's a collective voice for the banking and finance industry. They do represent 300 firms. They seek to enhance competitiveness, support customers, facilitate innovation. Okay, that sounds good. Well, you get more into this. Look at this for a second. Pull it up on the other screen. But I like the terminology here. Time for the industry to lead. Who? Well, probably Quant. And all the other ones are part of their consortium of like connections right in that screen that's inside of a screen it says time for the industry to lead the bank of england is clear i'll blow it up more for you guys on this you see neither the bank nor the government would program a digital pound or restrict how it was spent this is of course from a fintech strategy group report this part is real crucial for anybody that has XRP, Stellar, and so on that thinks it's just them. And that's nobody else that are part of this bigger conglomerate scheme of things, if you will. Okay? And don't get me wrong. This is not me flooding XRP or Stellar or any of that. I hold all those, right? I'm diversified. But when you read this statement here, programmable payments, the biggest I can make it, so bear with me. Programmability is a core basically mentioning that differentiator for the digital pound and perhaps ultimately for UK sovereign currency. Like it says on the sentence below, it is essential to the monetization of a UK CBDC. And this is coming from Quant Network? Yeah. Project Roslyn, they're always going to reference it. This is their pride and joy, right? Has demonstrated a range of programmable use cases for which, of course, Quant has provided the underlying tech will be the remit of forward thinking commercial banks goes on more about this and so on you go further down here and you do see this highlight this is from of course the quant network but the point is subliminal messages key highlights pictures making central bank digital currencies programmable money and tokenization of other asset classes simple trusted and, of course, behind the screen, you know it's going to say future-proof because that's what Gilbert Verdian always says, correct? Yeah. I'm going to jump over to this next part and why I think we should point this out. A little bit more about the whole topic of, you know, what's digital. Digital pounds. We talk about the Digital Pound Foundation. But I was telling you guys, you know, a little bit more about, about digital euros and especially like I think it was last week we were talking about, well, what's the United States going to do? Well, there's a power play for the United States, but we still have to recognize what's at hand, what's in front of us as we speak. And what's in front of us is this. 
Digital Euro Association at Hara wins Bank of Spain contract for wholesale CBDCs. Now, not the last quant video or the live show, but the one before that, I touched a little bit on this whole thing with Spain and, of course, the whole connection with Andrew Carrier from Quant. What's really significant is just to pound it home a little bit more. I'm not going to take you to the article because I've already been there. But tokenized deposit trials on the Hara project involves the issuance of two or more separate wholesale CBDCs for cross-border purposes and the provision of walls to participants. Now. I don't know if you guys remember, I pulled up that PDF from last time. And last time we opened up the PDF, we talked about those specific two DLT layers, the one and the two. And also, like it says, issuing stuff two or more separate wholesale CBDs for cross-border purposes. Provision of wallets, those participants, so on and so forth. But this is Spain. Well, what about the quant connection? No, well, check this out because there's a lot to it, right? So to see Spain, all right, and then of course to confirm some things in the past in regards to lack chain, here's an update. What about the whole thing of lack chain? Well, goes more into this and it states, basically speaking, that while the implementation of CBDC is not necessarily based on distributed ledger technology, this is by far the most likely progression route. This is because DLT can also support a wide range of use cases with high social impact beyond CBDC and other financial applications. It is for this reason that many national governments have developed or begun to develop managed DLT infrastructures known as DLNs. Now, this is a term that you guys probably haven't heard here at Maximus Crypto or maybe some other stations and so on, that's okay. We're going to get used to hearing that a little bit more often as we get more into this calendar year, especially with everything that Quant's got going uh, for this roadmap for 2024. We're going to really get into that 2024 outline. It says, while national DLNs have huge potential, regional multinational DLNs have even more. Why did Quant Papa highlight this? Well, I want to bring it to you guys. This is because they deliver more value than national infrastructures. Now, this is not where I want people to all of a sudden say, I got to focus on this. I got to rewatch this. I'm going to go dump all my XRP and all that. Don't do anything crazy like that. But it does get interesting because it says providing the ability to deal with cross jurisdictional issues and to support cross border trade. The benefits of regional DLNs are so significant that some are already live. We already know this. Well, why are you pointing it out, Max? Blackchain was live, right? We understand that uh, it went from, what was it, guys? Testnet to mainnet, you know, went from pilot to so on. You know, it's, it's a thing. Just because it's live doesn't mean there's full-fledged implementation worldwide. And, this, you know, quant goes gangbusters, you know, Price-wise, not yet. You got to lay the foundation in, right? But it does state that the reason why these are so significant and why they're already live is that there's an advanced state of development in the European Union. For example, the EBSI DLN is coming online, while China's BSN infrastructure is now rolling out globally. Probably, however, the most advanced example of regional DLN is currently Lakshan, and of course, who's part of that? And got that thing done right. Quant Network, an alliance led by the Inter-American Development Bank operating across Latin America, Caribbean regions, and so on. But Lackchain itself is already having demonstrable positive social impact, and the consortium has developed a roadmap which will ultimately lead to interconnection of regional DLT ecosystems. I like that because more of a thriving ecosystem and having quant already part of all that. It just, you know, it's like saying uh, like the early days of, of laying down all the uh, fiber optic cable all across the United States and maybe across oceans and so on. Well, a lot of us back in the late nineties, we're still on dial up. Some of us were on fiber, maybe DSL and so on, but not really quite fiber. Right? So that infrastructure was laid down. And then next thing you know, most of us have, Awesome internet now. 
you should apply those principles to kind of like what happens in Web3 um, with these advancements of blockchain, DLT, and so on, right? I don't think that's a, that's a bad analogy. I kind of look at quant in that same regard. Getting more into this, quant's unique overledger technology will facilitate the creation of a new fast cross-border payment systems for the region using tokenized money. You guys always state, you know, not necessarily you guys specifically, but I mean, people in general will state, you know, QNT is built on Ethereum. You know, it's a garbage token. And with that said, what's the point of having um, tokenized money that's connected to Ethereum? And if I was a person that didn't, didn't do much research, I'd be kind of with you, right? That, that sounds like a, a legitimate question. And we'll point some of that out. But it says, by flexibility, tokenizing money using Quant's patent-pending multi-DLT token tech, which is uh, MLTS, that's a mouthful, the Lackchain DLN will power a variety of new solutions. They do range from transferring money between private individuals to government to corporate payments, as well as many other future Lackchain use cases. The project will also implement solutions, and here's the horror reference, because I know you guys sometimes say, Max, you do too much of jumping from one thing to another. You do need to do a better job. Well, I connected it, and also Quampapa did. To implement solutions from Adhara, which is a settlement bank interface, and involve close working partnerships with who? Their regional banks. How so? Well, there's this benefit of this breakthrough, that's going to be revolutionary in remittances and financial inclusion. Now, all the ones below, we already gave you those examples last year and even the year before. <clears throat> I do like that Quan Papa highlighted that. Now, taking over to Hadhara and pounding at home why this is so significant, especially if you're a Quan holder, look at this for a second. This explains some cool details that just get right to the point. So this is from their new PDF brochure. I believe from 2024, if not late 2023, going into 2024. Regional interbank payments, build your regional payments network, global payments network, see how this, led by central banks in the region. It just pounds at home more that they're activating all these regional banks through the entire region of Latin America and so on. So instead of just having a few banks, how would you like to have the whole conglomerate, right? Going more into this, there's another key page. We didn't do the, the whole PDF because that would take probably five hours. But what about testnet? Just like with Lackchain, it starts off with a testnet. So Adhara has this testnet, and it's a venue in which banks, central banks, and other financial market participants do visualize and prepare for a new ecosystem. Again, Quant being part of all that is huge. It is comprised of a collection of interconnected ecosystems with logical boundaries but cannot, or I should should say, but can connect to other ecosystems to enable additional functionality. Here's another highlight. Back to this guy, this Oliver um, Michelle or Michael, I can't pronounce it right. So it says, Adhara, a LinkedIn post from the portfolio companies of uh, Tokentus Investment AG is shared below. Dates, is the kickoff 2024, because we're in 2024, we are delighted to announce this milestone, delivering a CBDC infrastructure for the Bank of Spain. At Hara, we'll be implementing a digital interbank orchestration platform, further illuminating our deposit token solution. And of course, we showed you the quant connection in the past, but the pound at home more, it's the terminology orchestration platform. Check this out for a second. This is good. Look at this for a second, just in case some people say, well, it doesn't quite say quant does but anyway quant straight from their site as overledger orchestrates all communications between multiple points it adds an extra layer of security transactions and data exchanges on the blockchain when used with overledger authorized the security effect is manifold another way to achieve interoperability is the bridge technology you guys heard about this before we talked about ietf and all that right all right this part's also good i should have tagged dag in the uh, topic of tonight, because a lot of you guys hold Constellation DAG. What's really cool here is this. So Constellation Network, 
obviously the DAG token or DAG coin, because I forgot they're their own, got their own blockchain going on, right? They have this reference, Quant Network Constellation Network. Constellations type classes are smart contracts for orchestrating data pipelines. If you did a simple Google search, is my point, right? This is taken from a little, you know, cropped from it and so on. This is what will pop up. Interesting. Therefore, a new internet for topological data is created. Hmm. The terminology always matches up. Again, it's just connecting the dots. I, I love that Quant Papa does this. It's pretty cool. Getting more into this. Look at this for a second. Back to the Quant site. Once again, I'm not going to read it all. But networks and DLTs that were silo can now connect. I remember when we were talking about Stellar yesterday. And they also talk about wall garden, uh, wall gardens and silos. I'm telling you, all these guys talk together. Birds of the feather flock together, as the saying goes. Oracle certified the Overledger Gateway as interoperability solution for its Oracle blockchain platform last year. True, enabling its customers to do what? Orchestrate transactions spanning Oracle blockchain and other permission and public blockchain ledgers more easily. If anything, you guys do it in your own spare time. Google what you just saw from Constellation and so on. It all matches up. Even with Stellar, it matches up. All right, getting more into this. Look at this. Back to the topic of wholesale CBDCs. Why blockchain? Well, why not blockchain? Business applications, for example, payments, interoperability to smart con uh, token smart contracts. Remember last week you saw the highlights from the Quant Network site highlighting some of this, that lady that you saw at the beginning of the outline, she was specifically mentioning some of these key things, you know, especially when it comes to audits, right? Visibility, accessibility, atomic coupling, no need for messages and reconciliations. That's interesting. How about this part? Blockchain gateway for all the FUD about Ethereum and so on. Blockchain infrastructure, settlement, finality, resilience, and security. Very cost um effective apparently if you just use the infrastructure we're not talking about the settlement token as in or coin as in ethereum itself simple integration leveraging a blockchain security model where is it referenced from the adhara site here's julio ferrara um doing a i guess like a live zoom call or wherever this was taken might have been taken from youtube but i doubt it all right check this out a little bit more from the Adhara site. Another screenshot. This one was from somebody's phone, but still valid. Adhara for the central bank, forging the uh, highest quality initiatives for this sector. There are all those videos we did on about um, finality and so on. Well, central bank, for instance, excuse me, participating banks and regulatory authorities are able to become quickly familiar with various governance operation models and this does include risks and benefits of such networks but i think the benefits outweigh the bad provides end-to-end -end tools for managing direct issuance transfer limits value dates bank and onboarding and modeling real-time growth settlements connections benefits to particular participants include reduced settlement risk new liquidity options increased traceability compliance all that stuff right but look at this for a second. The bottom part says the ability for commercial banks to connect from day one, not like later way down to the road, day one via DC Commander, helping treasuries manage intraday funding and orchestration once again, pounding that home. I don't know why he didn't highlight that. That's okay. He's not perfect, right? Nobody is. Of settlement flows for new domestic digital platforms. I know this seems like a lot, but this is good stuff. Um, I want to bring in to you guys a little bit more about this because it talks about more about these participants. Maybe you can think this is dry, but this is good. So as far as the participants, there's many different participants, right? But what about bringing the end-to-end -end digital proposition to the life and or to life, I should say, and provide unparalleled possibility for strategic use case validation? There's already many use cases to begin with. I'm not going to get this about, you know, the practical design. I think we know about this. Um, but I want to get, yeah, this last part. No bank technology is required as all elements are hosted by Adhara in partnership with Finality for settlement assets. Interesting. Because this tells us the reason why you don't need it is because, again, 
that whole thing of interoperability and enterprise use cases and you know out with the old in with the new but that time period of taking what's from the old and bringing it over to the new hence why we have you know these bridges right all right this gets good pounds at home just that much more and this part this is where quant papa wanted me to put a highlight he feels as though that the flutters are going to have fuel with this but in reality they won't straight from the quant network site look at this for a second i know we talked about gas fees before and this is where a lot of people who just haven't done a lot of the research when it comes to quant um come up with their own definition of you know the gas fees but look at this for a second similarly instead of using cryptocurrency ether as an ETH, Ethereum, as gas to conduct transactions or execute contracts. And please don't shoot the messenger here. This is straight from the quant network. So, yes, to conduct transactions or execute contracts, overledger transactions are powered by the QNT utility token with seamless fiat payment options available for corporate customers. It's important to note that overledger is a DLT gateway and doesn't store data or information. Instead, it works as an abstraction platform that orchestrates, once again, interactions between various ledgers. All the data is encrypted at the source and cannot be accessed or manipulated. In this way, overledger helps facilitate a highly secure and decentralized blockchain system, which, of course, is catered for the security needs for corporate clients. But let's just jump back for for a brief moment about the whole thing in regards to the gas fees, because everybody's always pointing that out, right? So I'm gonna take you back up to this real quick. Um, because you know, my thing is it, it's definitely worth sharing, right? So basically speaking, what Quant Papa wants to point out, especially when it comes to the flutters, the flutters will basically look at this that you see on your screen and say, Well, you know, fiat options available. If there's fiat options available, then you know the QNT token is basically not needed, and therefore it's worthless, right? What they don't realize is you need to pay with fiat, for instance, or pay without the QNT token. The overledger itself, um, the transaction just basically won't work. You know, one goes as the saying goes, one feeds the other, right? They go hand in hand. Um, but you know, thought we point that out, you know, basically speaking, and, and, and this was pointed out before also, um, that you could either do the Q and T token or pay in fiat, but in reality, it seems like you have two options, but at the end of the day, they still will come back to the whole thing of the Q and T transaction, because that would be correct. Q and T would be worthless. Um, if that didn't happen. So yes, you gotta be able to pay, um, with fiat if you choose to do so or with q and t right vice versa and uh basically the transaction won't work without the q and t token anyway so there's that all right jumping back into this for a second i want to share more about this with you guys um let's pull this up hold on a second so yes look at this for a second in 2019 a global group of 15 banks, including BNY Mellon, Commerce Bank, and Credit Suisse, came together to establish London-based Finality International. Um, of course, that aims to bring central bank money into a digitalized token form, will allow banks to significantly reduce their intraday liquidity requirements, and will crucially overcome the credit risk conundrum referenced or referred to above, I should say. I think I pointed this out a few times in regards to the finality videos with Quant. But where can we also reference something that's not 2019, but a little bit more closer to home with 2024? Again, back to Adhara. This is why they point this out. Back to the whole thing in intraday credit. Instantly provide dynamically drawdown, um, or drawdown, I should say, on contracted guaranteed credit line when settlement liquidity is required. I mean, is this where... You know, we talked about the whole thing of, like, for instance, with XRP taking on the debt and that what if. Now, that what if, don't get me wrong, I would never flood that. That's that's amazing in itself um, because that's where we understand the ODL really stands out. But how would you like to have something that's literally in writing from a company called Adhara? And then Adhara 
has that connection to a wholesale CBDC, right? You could get where we're going with this, with Spain. So everybody's wishing that their platform could already have the government connections, if you will. And then when we do more of our own research, we come to the conclusion, yeah, that already exists. With who? With quant. That's what's beautiful about quant. That's why I can't stop talking about quant. I know some people, like, they message me, Max, you know, I know that you love quant, but you need to start covering other things. Okay, I get it. But I'm never going to forget about the God token of quant. And I will never shut up about it. And I will say that unapologetically. Like, I, you know, you know me. I love you guys. I would never disrespect anybody. You know, I'm a humble person. But when it comes to this stuff, you got to make every project out there only would dream of having connections like this. And when we research it more, boom, there's the connections. Plain as day. All right, check this out for a second. Quant Network, another one. Highlights, finality. Look for this or look at this for a second. We did talk about wholesale CBCs, right? So wholesale banking, this type of ecosystem can offer an advantage of processing and settling cross-border payments. Yes, not just XRP and Stellar, guys. I'm just saying. Instantaneously on the blockchain, stripping away many of the time-intensive manual processes and helping payment systems, yes, payment systems, move towards a T equals zero capability. And look at this quote for a second. Uni settlement finality. Yeah, no kidding. Once the payment settles is done, there's no recourse. Whatever system you have on chain needs to provide that legal protection, says finality. CEO uh, Romeos Ram, I probably not pronounced that right. He believes that banks could save, quote, as much as $16 billion a year on liquidity cost provisions. Now, I will state this and give credit where credit's due. This is where we stated, hey, ISO 222 really, really stands out because getting rid of that old MT messaging system from Swift and going with the new, that in itself for not just cross-border payments, but overseas payments to nations like, you know, on the other side of the world and so on. Um, like that classic example I gave, you know, the Bank of Greece, right? Uh, trying to send an overseas payment to the, the Bank of South Korea. And they want to do $10 trillion, like on a loan, for instance. And the bank agrees getting hit with, uh, what was it, 60, yeah, $60 billion fee because it's the old tech. And then this is where, you know, people are like, well, with XRP, it's, it's super, super cheap. Right. I get that. Awesome. I still love my XRP. But if you also have something that already exists and you got this quote from this CEO, who says that banks could save as much as 16 billion a year on liquidity cost provisions. That's a different particular thing, but it's part of the greater mix. And every single turn of the you know, coin, if you will, or every mention, you see these interviews of Gilbert Verdian. He's standing side by side with you know Martin Hargreaves talking about some of these banks. And some of these banks simply are like, yeah, we're messing around with quant. We're getting involved with quant because they simply help us save money. That's supply and demand all the way, right? So there's other benefits here. We know about this, right? Low cost bank-to-bank uh, -bank payments to business customers. Literally what I just said, right? Use a digital dollar, for instance, or euro payment and benefit from significantly improved payment settlement times. I do want to talk about that for a second because if anything... Last week, we talked about Quant's uh, power play for the United States. And when you see digital dollar, well, you can put two and two together. I honestly think that even some of our retail banks, you know, I'm not going to say necessarily it's definitely going to be Wells Fargo, Bank of America. I mean, so, you know, we know Bank of America loves Ripple. Don't get me wrong. But does that mean that it's exclusive only to Ripple? I don't think so. I think that you will start seeing some things of those particular banks will also say, hey, we also want to work with Quant because this will also help benefit us. Again, guys, ecosystems, supply and demand, greater speed, traceability, transparency, and global trade. I think we get most of this stuff. Jumping back more into this is another one from Inhara. I think this is good because we're talking about the central banks. 
Central Bank Simulator. The Central Bank Simulator allows for fast prototyping of a complete distributed CBDC real-time growth settlements network. I mean, I watch some of the other influencers from here and there, just like a lot of you guys do, and so on. I, I think they have great research. But a lot of times it's just focused strictly on XRP, Stellar, and so on. I definitely think you have to have Quant get an honorable mention. It definitely should be recognized. They do sit at the table, and if anything, they might be the head of the table when it's all said and done. I'm just saying. Now, again, that's not FUD. That's just me being real. This is why I also will keep pounding home. Diversification, for me personally, like I'm still going to go with it, you know? But I get it. Some people, we want to, you know, be focused on certain things. Hey, no problem. You know, I get that. Um, I want to go back to this whole thing about Liquidity Hub because you did see that mention from um, Adhara in regards to solving this whole thing with, um, was it uh, provisions, right, for the central banks and so on. So this one, Liquidity Hub T.0. Is this a reference back to Gilbert Verdian? You better believe it. Again, we talk about BSV, some of those guys talking in code. Well, it's a little bit, you know, of code for you. So this is a funding and settlement center for multinational banking groups, provides a group of uh, wide deposit token pools for internal, excuse me, internal entities and institutional clients with real-time visibility, insta, instant intra-group settlement and connectivity to external wholesale settlement networks through their deposit token solution. Interesting. That's a mouthful, is it not? All right. I'm going to have a video, I believe, here in a little bit, but give me just a second. I do want to bring this up as well. It's just, it horror really stands out. They got this thing, another thing, you know, payment or pay hub T.0. Again, back to the whole thing of Gilbert Verdian from the Quant Network with T, um, T0, right? A group of group wide payments hub offering internal entities, institutional clients, real time cross border and cross currency payments with dynamic FX pricing, instant clearing atomic settlement and connectivity to external wholesale payment networks through our deposit token solution. If you didn't have that last part about the to uh, deposit token solution, and you didn't have this top part where it said Adhara, and you just connected to, I don't know, like somebody else's show, you would literally think immediately that, oh, this is about XRP. I'm telling you guys, Quant stands at the forefront too. Please do not dismiss it, even if you don't hold Quant Again, think outside the box, right? Be more, you know, be open-minded. I remember back in the days when I was in, I could, I didn't know if I should take like things like BSV seriously. You better believe I do. I take this all serious if it has a real use case and I've done more enough, you know, research um, to basically say, yeah, this is the real McCoy. Check out this for a second. Um, Cause you know, when it comes to quant, we did talk about the treasury in the past and so on. So look at this, a complete solution in regards to treasury T.0, um, for corporates, a complete solution for banking groups to quickly develop and offer advanced payments and treasury management solutions for corporate clients, including treasury visibility, cash management, real-time payments, and FX risk management, real-time payments. Remember in the past, we were talking about Hedera and for instance, FedNow instant payments. And then uh, we did some other connections, obviously, with Ripple XRP, Stellar, and so on, with some of the other connections they have, like their alliances and so on, how this could work with FedNow. But this statement, cash management, real-time payments, and FX risk management. You know, earlier, we were just talking last week, the hot topics, right, about these ETFs, you know, exchange-traded funds, and, you know, finally being able to see some of our big um, – you know, big name traditional finance sectors, like I guess you could say, like even your Wells Fargo's, your city banks, and so on, offer different financial services or recommendations instead of just your stocks and bonds and so on to be able to invest, like in Bitcoin, because Bitcoin is considered a, you know, part of a, a menu of different ETPs, exchange traded products. And then now we're waiting for like XRP, we're waiting for, well, I'm not waiting for it, but some people are waiting for Ethereum. And so on, right? But this statement already here, and quant is already connected to it all. So, do you really need the whole thing of uh, exchange traded funds? I think that's a good thing, right? But for quant to really be sitting there for the big corporations to make it happen with 
FX risk management tools and all these other things. You could put two and two together, right? Yeah. All right. What we're going to do now is we're going to take you to this. And the point is this. Gilbert Verdian is always talking about, you know, this thing, right? Let's jump back to it. Um, yeah. Let's remember this. Gilbert Verdian is always talking about, for instance, tokenization, right? Programmable money. Other asset class, classes, I should say, that are simple, trusted, and like he always says, what, guys? Future proof. You don't see it behind that, but trust me, that's what it says, okay? So tr what's trusted? What's future proof? Well, the bottom line is this. Why is that trust broken? And if anything, does Quant Network solve that problem? You could draw your own conclusion, but let's go ahead and play this. This is from uh checked cast why trust is broken two minutes and 16 seconds yes this is all part of the bigger picture with quant listen to this think outside the box here we go well i think you just need to look at how much fraud is going on and we've personally seen that like with checked and in personal lives as well as well as also having a bit of a career in it so um, again, referring back to like myself and Anchor when we were working together with Accenture, we were dealing a lot with fraud, specifically people going through telephony channels into banks and defrauding people. Um, that really good example, we put a system in day one, it caught someone like about to get a credit card delivered or banking card delivered to someone who's like 90 year old and all of their life savings were in this account. And the card got stopped in the post. And it obviously would have been picked up by a fraudster because it was going to the wrong address. So like just the incidences of, and the impact of it is massive. If you look at it worldwide, I think fraud costs, costs around, like, I think this is yearly, is $5 trillion a year. So just the cost is absolutely mind-blowing. Then if you look inside like stuff that we've seen recently with crypto or just experience as a company, we've had people fraudulently claiming to work for us um, to get jobs elsewhere. We've had people approach us pretending to either be investors or exchange listings, both of which have been fraudulent, easily identified that, but it's still, even if you catch it early, it's still a waste of time. Um, and it's just pervasive. And then you've also got the impact on people like the community where, um, great example, we had uh, some of our community rejoin our community using alt accounts and within joining and posting, within i think five minutes they got a message from a fake ambassador and a fake moderator offer, offering to help them um and it's obviously with things starting to come back it's just going to get worse so i i think it just all of that shows like how badly it's broken um and they're the biggest symptoms but i think there's a load of other stuff in terms of because it's so hard to build that trust you then have to go and do a load of extra work that you wouldn't normally have to so you have to go like checking loads of references that you just shouldn't need to because all that trust is broken in the first place. And it's just so dangerous to get it wrong. All right. I had to close out of that. Okay. So we obviously have more and, um, I need to get into the last bit of this before we get into the break, a little pause break, um, because I want to point out the last bit of this because it's really going to shine, in my opinion, right? So let's take you to the Quant Network site. Today's news from the Quant Network site. Yes, check us out for yourself. Look at this. This is really cool, in my opinion. And um, I'll take off that branding so it doesn't block your view. Look what this says. Quant launches make integration for powerful code-free automation with any blockchain. Oh, my goodness. Did Quant just go from three lines of code to code-free? I think they did. Because you want to know something, guys? Even with Stellar, one thing that stood out was with Sorbon, or versus, I should say, Quant, was Quant boasted three lines of code. Stellar, one line of code. Now you go to the whole thing of no code? 
how is that even possible? Like some people say, no, nah, that's BS. Like, you know, you got to programming involves some form of code. Okay. I hear you. Don't shoot the messenger, right? Look at this for a second. When was this published? Well, it is basically today, the 17th. It gets chopped off right there, but it's one seven, I promise you. So let's take a look at this for a second. And I promise this is good. So Quant launches make integration. Andrew Carrier posts this. Remember how we were talking about him earlier in regards to Har and so on. But they're thrilled to announce the launch of this integration with Make. Now available in the Make store, Overledger enables individual teams and enterprises to build automate, automated workflows customized to their roles and businesses. On the far right, you see Luke Riley once again. Dr. Luke Riley, excuse me, apologize. Says, quote, instead of wasting up to a year of development time to explore blockchain companies can now use our integrations and do it in days this was literally pointed out two or three years ago in an interview with for instance quant uh quant's very own gilbert verney and martin hargreaves were talking about that in some of those interviews i share with you guys and so on um i want to point this out as well it says make an automated software that enables users to visually create build and automate workflows without the need of any previous coding experience. Used by hundreds of thousands of businesses across the world, it allows users to build and automate a variety of solutions and applications. Now, can we just take a pause to recognize how amazing that is for a second? So put yourself in the shoes of a big business. You come over, you hear about this whole thing, a quant, you don't know much about it. You're immediately thinking, well, before I find out more, these guys boast that we don't need any previous coding experience. Well, that means I don't have to hire a team of coders. And if anything, I don't have to worry about if they know the coding language that Quant provides. That's game changer stuff. I don't care if you agree with me or not. Used by hundreds of thousands of businesses across the world, it allows users to build and automate a variety of solutions and applications. When we talk about you know, does your blockchain or DLT have um, a bunch of dApps because dApps lead to bigger ecosystems and so on, utility and motion? Well, geez, you know, thousands of businesses and, and hundred or hundreds of thousands of businesses to build, automate, make these solutions, applications. When we talk about in the future, we will see applications that just pop up left and right and not even realize it's tied into the quant. What do you think that's going to do for the value of your QNT? I mean, let's just be real about that. Overledger, like it says, is a blockchain agnostic API platform that offers interoperability and built-in integrations to enable users to create bespoke workflows. Uh, platform also integrates institutional digital assets. We showed those on the previous slides with like uh, Adhara, right? Uh, integrated with complex business processes in which there's only a few clicks. This is the latest launch in a series of overledger integrations, all of which are designed to increase the accessibility of blockchain and offer users across to automated processors um, that they typically see in financial services industry. So they're taking what they offer normally to just the financial services industry and offering it to us. Imagine how much that's going to be worth, right? Right, you know? I always use this as an example, and it's a good analogy, I think. So, you know, back in 2001, I think that was the first movie I remember that used ray tracing technology. Just hear me out on this for a second. So, as we know, in the movie Pearl Harbor, whether you're a fan of it or not, there's no way you could replicate uh, over 300 real Mitsubishi Zeros, right, for the attack on Pearl Harbor. Right. There's like, I think, literally two zeros in all of the world. Maybe one's only operational. I've seen it, by the way. Me and my dad a few years ago at air show. Very cool witness that. But the point is, without CGI or something like that, you can't replicate it. So how do you make it look photorealistic? Well, this is not a render video. But the point is ray tracing. To be able to take, uh, you know, an image and rate, you know, trace over it like a thousand times and take multiple pictures from all sorts of angles to make it visually, you know, um, realistic for us. But the point is, 
that technology used to be only exclusive to Hollywood and big budget films, hence your Pearl Harbor movie, which I believe was at least 150 million, you know, or more to basically develop um, the, and get made. But the technology was exclusive to Hollywood. And then, for instance, I think it was um, all the way up to the year, I want to say 2015 or 2016, give or take, you see these video cards from NVIDIA where you can get RTX video cards. Very expensive. But the point is, instead of that being exclusive to Hollywood, it becomes something that we as consumers in the masses, right, for, you know, talk about, you know, uh, widespread adoption, we have access to it. My point is, I'm trying to make to you guys is this reference, right, financial inclusion or um, fi the financial sector is only having access to this type of technology. And now you see it, what? being available to not just the big wigs, but all businesses. So Quant having access to bring these services and this technology, not just to the Bank of International Settlements, not just to the Bank of England and so on, but to all businesses. You don't think that's a game changer? You know, we talk about the plumbing. It's like it's beyond plumbing at this point. We're literally talking about the infrastructure of Web3. I, I think that's a good analogy. In the age of AI businesses and people, they're increasingly looking for ways to learn faster and work smarter. Integration exemplifies just that. Opens the possibility for blockchain for everyone in an intuitive and accessible way, says Gilbert Rudian. One more quote. This is good. This marks another significant milestone in their mission to make blockchain simple, trusted, future proof, by providing no code solution with minimal effort for users to roll out new use cases. And the appeal of these integrations doesn't stop there. They are also offering enterprises the possibility to accelerate proof of concepts and save significant time, resources, and investment, says, of course, Dr. Luke Riley, who is the head of innovation over at the Quant Network. Quote, instead of wasting up to a year in development, just like that quote over there, we'll say it again, time to explore blockchain companies can now use integrations and do it in days do it in days you know how powerful of a statement that is you know like my dream and i'm gonna get there i don't care what anybody says i know i'm gonna do it my dream is to develop a couple of video games in the future everybody has an exit plan some people you know it's like shout to sobo right you got you know you want to go retire and live out in a, a nice area in the woods and out in the cabin right that actually sounds really cool by the way everybody has their own dream my dream of course is to use this generational wealth or retirement money and so on to develop a couple of video games it's always been my dream since a little kid okay i will fulfill that i'm gonna get there someday but as a game developer right or in the future i'm not gonna be just a developer you know producer slash director to develop a triple a budget game i'm looking at a minimum of one year right um if it's a battlefield type game instead of Call of Duty, like two years. It's safe to say every AAA game, whether it's Call of Duty or Battlefield, you're looking at at least a year minimum, right? So development. Back to this whole thing of quant network with this. Companies can now use their integrations and do it in days. Now, we're not talking about video games. I get that. But there's been more than enough examples of what these other businesses are looking to do in six months to a year. And to be able to told, be told, hey, guess what? Here's some examples of how much it costs for you guys to do this in three months. And you could do it in days. Or how about an example of if it was just a month and still be able to be told, hey, you can do it in a week. But come on, guys. Do it in days. Why? Because you don't have to have the coding expertise. You don't have to learn a bunch of Python, C++, C Sharp, and so on. Do it in days. And people still want to deny quant and say, it's just another ERC-20 token. Give me a break. For real. Give me a break. All right. Look at this for a second. We're going to talk about this until before we wrap it up. This is big because it's actually from the Digital Pound Foundation. And, of course, you know, Gilbert Verdian used to be part of this. So let's pull this up for a second. I'm not going to put a lot of emphasis on it, but it's, it's worth pointing out. So check this out. UDPN, they partner with the Digital Pound Foundation to support development of digital currencies. 
and it gets into a lot of this stuff. But the, a lot of the stuff that you see here just pounds home quant even that much more. So for one, the Digital Pound Foundation, like it says, a member-led forum supporting the introduction of well-designed digital pound. True. That's why it's called the Digital Pound Foundation, right? Um, but it gets in this part about UDPN that promotes financial inclusion by allowing enterprises around the world to connect directly with the centralized and decentralized digital systems of the future. You ever wonder how that's even possible? Through the overledger. The partnership between UDPN and the DPF will allow entities to focus on policy and regulatory developments in different jurisdictions and explore the geopolitical monetary implications of new forms of digital money. Back to the thing that we showed at the very, very beginning. And that is this right here. What does it say once again, just in case you missed it? Time for the industry to lead. And who is it? Quant. Neither the bank nor the government would program a digital pound or restrict how it was spent. Programmable payments. Programmability is core differentiator for the digital pound and perhaps ultimately for the UK sovereign currency. I know I showed that at the beginning of the outline, but it just reconfirms everything from the beginning of the outline. That's why I share this type of stuff with you guys. And getting back into the part that we had, the UDPN team is running a series of 12 proofs concept with multiple global banks, technology companies, and payment service providers. Allows participants to explore different use cases and scenarios. Have you noticed anything very familiar, uh, familiar with all this terminology? Did it literally feel like it was exactly what you saw mentioned here? Yeah, it is almost exactly the same. And what is mentioned there? Quant, time and time again. So I'm not going to get into all of this stuff here, but the point is the terminology was mentioned. You know, you don't have to be a guy that's part of the NDA to understand the connection. You just do your own research, connect the dots, right? All right. Are you guys almost ready for the uh, having your cake and eating it too, I guess you could say? Well, maybe. Look at this for a second. This is good. This gets juicy. This is from Investment Week. Shout out to Quant Papa for finding this. Really, really cool because some of you guys are like, I don't like it when Max does the connecting the dots. All he does is connect dots. I want to see confirmation. I don't want to see speculation. Okay, okay, I hear you. Look at this for a second. Literally posted today as in what? January 17th, 2024. You have IA's John Allen, the UK can leverage. That's right. That's not a trick. Leverage you, uh, excuse me, DLT based funds for wider benefit. Wider capital markets digitalization. Say what you want. I know this is not a segment about Clearpool, but this is also going to help Clearpool. Why is that? Because Clearpool is a freaking capital markets ecosystem, right? We're talking about being able to provide crazy amounts of capital for VCs and so on. So that even enables the likes of Clearpool. But again, this is not Clearpool statement. All right. So look at this. Post it again today. And here it is. You have Sean Allen, head of innovation operations unit at the Investment Association, it says technological advances are taking place at a faster pace than ever before. Last year, the Investment Association outlined a vision for the future investment fund 3.0. The new iteration of the investment fund powered by distributed ledger technology is now available. Is it really, though? Is it? Or is it just Max being super excited? No. Listen to this. This presents an opportunity for the UK to secure its future as the leading financial services hub, digital age, better serving customers in the UK and across the world. Back to what, guys? Back to this once again, pounding it home. Because if you go here on Twitter, they haven't posted anything since the end of the year. Why would Quant not shoot, or, you know, Andrew Carrier and a few of the members of the team all of a sudden say, we're not going to post on Twitter anymore? We're just going to, you know, do other things? Where are the other things? The other things are literally what we are showing here. And that is they realize that they're going to help serve customers in the UK because they are of the UK and, of course, around the world. 
Like it says also, recent years, the question of how to harness the long promise benefits of DLT within the UK investment sector has increasingly been discussed. Back in November 2023, they had a first phase report in the city minister's asset token or a management task force technology working group, and it was published as an industry collaboration with the Treasury and Financial Conduct Authority and talks about UK funds given approval to begin tokenization efforts. Wow. Why am I pointing that out today other than just because for the sake of a quant video? The reason why this is big is because we do understand that the UK stands at the forefront for all of this. Oh, man, do they stand at the forefront when it comes to all this. So already you had the whole thing that we mentioned with XDC um, when it came to, for instance, uh, you know, the signing of King George in regards to the Electronic Trades Documents Act, right? UK, again, right? Leading the forefront. But remember how yesterday's show we talked about, for instance, with Stellar, and we gave you that white paper that outlines literally the blueprint for the how the United States is going to come involved with the whole thing? United States is not there yet. Like we point out also, even when it comes to ISO 222, they're the last to come to the big show, right? It's not that they're not going to come. They're just the last to show up to the big party. The UK is the party. You get what I'm saying? They are literally yeah, throwing the party all the way. They're, they're the host. Gilbert Verdian's like, yeah, come on down. Champagne glasses, crystal, the whole nine yards, right? This report provides a baseline fund tokenization model and just like I mentioned, a blueprint for implementation. Wow, boil it, mash is sticking in steel. Look at that. UK investment funds can now use DLT for the registry and transaction functions. Oh my God. All right. Lord, forgive me. All right. As a result, investing in equity bond, mixed asset funds, and long term becomes more accessible and attractive to investors accustomed to digital first experience. Does it mention anything about Quant? Oh my gosh, I promise you, you're going to love this. They also laid a foundation for interaction with the wider digitalization coming across the UK and international capital markets. Oh God. Yes, thank you, my clear pool. Yes, this is going to be great for them too. It's important to be clear that this initiative is about leveraging new technologies to deliver greater efficiencies and enhance customer experience. Yes, Max did do his homework. Quant Papa did do his homework. We already gave the Adhara connection, did we not? And what did it mention with Adhara? It mentioned specifically leveraging new technology to deliver greater efficiencies and enhance customer experience. Max, you need to breathe. Yes, I do. In this first iteration, the UK will offer investors a digital collective investment vehicle composed entirely of mainstream assets. assets. And here in the United States, we're all raw 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 etf and over in the uk it's like yeah been there done that look what we got going on i would be jealous as all hell it's not about exposing investors to the risk of unbacked assets this model is fully compliant fully compliant how so think about it iso tc 307 the gilbert verdian quant network standard quant standard is iso tc 307 so boom that really exists Gilbert Verney many years ago already worked with standards. He created the standard for crowd out. And legal frameworks provide certainty for fund firms who have previously deployed their tax men in other jurisdictions. Now, I'm not going to read all of this, but I want to jump down to this part because we're talking about settlements, right? Especially real-time gross settlements and all that stuff, instant settlements. For now, settlement will occur off-chain and the DLT network will be private and permission. Why don't they just include future proof? I think that'd be given away, right? But the group is currently exploring models with different characteristics for the future. They have a phase two report. Yes, we're talking about 2024, um, about fund tokenization, recommendations for industry authorities expected early next year. We're basically into that right now. It has a robust and vibrant ecosystem, fintech, legal, regulatory investments. UK is well positioned for leveraging this innovation. Wow. Similar test developments are taking place in the capital markets to look at digitalization and assets that funds hold within their portfolios. All right, let's jump into this for a second. Talk about JP Morgan, that's a different thing. I'm gonna get down further into this in just a second. Uh, I'm not gonna get into all this crazy, crazy stuff. But this part, tokenization blueprint provided by the task force group 
because uh, we talked about the inter the IETF, Internet Engineering Task Force. Remember Gilbert Verdian's connection to that? Sends a clear message that UK is open for business and eager to utilize the benefits of digital asset technology for the industry and its co uh, consumers. Also serves a model for constructive innovation, industry collaboration with governments, because some people are asking, is it going to have the government? Yes. And regulators in the most effective way to uh, have fast-paced, impactful change, right? John Allen is head of Innovation and Operations Unit at the Investment Association. Now, hold on a second, because I got to pound it home. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> excuse me. Let's take you to this. And boom, look at this for a second. Quoted from Andrew Carrier, who reposted this on X, straight from Quant, everything we just read. And like it says, we wholeheartedly agree with Sean, right? The guy we just showed. And our founder, Gilbert Verdian, is looking forward to discussing the role of digital money and his promise of instant settlement and how it could play at your webinar tomorrow. Links in the comments. At your webinar? Sharing how everybody can save money? Do all this stuff connected to their, their infrastructure that's connected to everything? Really? Yeah, really. Really, yes. All right. Now, to take you to this thing. Um, where is this? Yes, this is crazy. Are you ready for this? CBDC adoption isn't going to slow down at all. All right. I know some of you guys don't like to talk about CBDC, but just hear me out. The momentum behind CBDC adoption remains strong in 2023 with several of the world's largest central banks and monetary authorities seeking to advise on how successfully they can implement CBDCs. In fact, according to the Bank of International Settlements, it is expected that there could be as many as 15 retail and nine wholesale CBDCs in circulation by 2030. Again, back to that quote from what? The Digital Pound Foundation said the exact same thing. So my point is this, before we wrap up this whole thing, and I'll show you the, the juicy, real juicy part. From what I gathered, okay, there's this company called Juniper Research. It is a market research firm. They predict a 260,000% increase. Are you ready for this? In CBDC transaction value by 2030, potentially reaching 213 billion. I remember earlier we were talking about some of those crazy things of um, like where this can go. This indicates significant growth. But basically speaking, you have to keep in mind that even though there's various speeds of distribution, the pace of adoption will vary considerably across regions and demographics, creating an uneven distribution of uses. Yes, the uneven distribution of uses would be that the United States is the last to show up to the big show. The widespread adoption of 2030, some people point out, is uncertain. But the point is, I want to share this thing with you because it really opens up your eyes. Check this out. Here it is on your screen. And this is from the Juniper Research. So I'm going to come out of frame on this one. I'm going to take out the branding for a second. And yeah, let me pull out the one for X as well. Let me see if I can blow this up even more for you guys. This is good. Just in case you're boomer and sooner or sitting on your couch, right? It's your dog. So look at this for a second. CBDC transactions to exceed 213 billion by 2030 as pilot projects accelerate rapidly. We already seen some of these pilot projects accelerate rapidly, especially when it comes to like lack chain. And now this whole thing with um, uh, wholesale CBDCs for Spain, the country of Spain. Look at this for a second. So you have, like it says, total value of CBDC transactions 2030 split by eight regions. So you do see that North America is still a big part of the pie. Latin America, that would be basically like lack chain. And then you have, for instance, West Europe that 
you know, Quant's part of this. So, I mean, if you think about it already, right, we understand that in the orange area, Ripple and X, Ripple XRP and also um, Stellar are going after Africa, and rightfully so. But already you have a big the, – the two biggest pieces of the pie belong to Quant. Let's just be honest about that. Um, going more into this, look at what it says in the study by Juniper Research. The foremost experts analysis in the fintech and payments market today, they have found that the value of payments, the CBDCs, will reach that 213 billion annually by 2030, up from just 100 million in 2023. My God, going from millions to billions, multi billions. Radical growth over 260% reflects the early stage of the sector, currently limited to just the pilot projects. What about after we get out of pilot stage? Adoption will be driven by governments leveraging, again, back to the, the whole thing I was talking about with all this topic of leveraging, CBDCs to boost financial inclusions and increase their control over how digital payments are made. CBDCs will improve access to digital payments, particularly in emerging economies where mobile penetration is significantly higher than banking penetration. No, we're not going to read the, the white paper. Um, but basically speaking, yeah, that was the report from Juniper Research. I've seen them. We have, I haven't referenced them on the show before, but my point I wanted to bring to you was I think it's definitely worth paying attention to. And if anything, I am so glad to bring it to you guys. I know that was a lot of an outline. I need to get back into the comments, but hopefully you guys even that much more have a broader understanding of how quant literally is connected to everything. And just because everything is not going, um, you know, crazy as far as the price and all that, just like it, the saying goes, I mean, you have to build it, they will come. But they did build it. And it's built for everything. Mm -hmm.